everyone. Welcome to Friday. I mean, not the time or days mean anything anymore, but you know, Friday's always been good. It's always been a good time. There is, welcome to our Magnificent Mythologies stream. Thank you for resubscribing, Phoenix. John, you're fabulous. <laughs> um, for those who don't know, um, John is a, Phoenix Iwaki is a fabulous streamer who does amazing charity streams all the time. Um, and we adore, we adore him. Um, so let's, mm -hmm. let's, you know, let's shout them out a little bit. There is a, you can go and go follow them right this very second. If you follow that link right down there in the chat, they're great. Do it. This, but today we are here. Right now. We're right here right now with Bunny. Hey, Bunny. Bunny. I mean, <laughs> I mean, hi, I'm a Buns. <laughs> Why don't you tell the lovely people out there who you are, what you do, all the fun stuff, where they can find you? You can find me in a multitude of places. But first and foremost, hi, everyone. Once again, I'm a Buns. You can find me on Twitter at Honey Buns. And you can find me on Twitch at Battle Scar Bunny. Uh, currently, the best place for you to see me is actually on Phoenix and Wacky's channel on Wednesdays. I play Out of the Abyss uh, there on his channel. And I am TBA when it comes to streaming on my channel right now, unfortunately. But soon I will be fighting Cuphead and I will be crying at the fact that this clown has been making a fool out of me for the past three years. It'll be fine. Don't worry. Yeah. Got it. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like to experience any of my DM skills and not just my player skills, you can always sign up on Magpie, where I run masks. I love it. Yay. Very excited about that. And today she is going to be sharing her fabulous concepts with us. And live, right in front of your very eyes, you're going to be writing a whole adventure. It's That's right. Happen. We're all gonna be confused. No one knows what's <laughs> going on. Someone help me. <laughs> there is no help for any of us. <laughs> there is no help for any of us. <sighs> There's, but hey, let's start out by paying a couple bills. First, I'd like to give a shout out to number one, Gem Firefly. Gem Firefly is a fabulous organization that gives an enormous amount of time, effort, and money to charities. They are also our merch store for the Foundation for Inclusivity in Gaming, which is a stream that you are watching right now. The Foundation for Inclusivity in Gaming. Uh, our mission is to decolonize the TTRPG space by um, uplifting creators of color and Alphabet Mafia creators um, in a real way and not in a performative way. So we're not just going to chit chat about how much it sucks that people don't, oh, it's just not fair. We're gonna do something about it today, live on stream. We're gonna actually create an adventure that Bunny is going to own 100% of, and she can then utilize that as a new, newly published author to actually make money and promote herself and do all that kind of stuff. So what the foundation's going to do is we're going to provide all of the art, the layout, all that kind of stuff so that this does not cost her a single penny. So that's what we're doing today. We are actually, you know, putting our money where our mouth is. And that's why I love the foundation. And that's why I love Jim Firefly for being part of the foundation. So if you want to help the foundation out, Go hit up Gemmed Firefly. You can find them there. And you get fabulous, super comfy, soft t-shirts. And we just created a mug. And, and because our for the first adventure we wrote, we did in February, it is almost time to release that adventure. Which means we're going to be using some of the art from that adventure to make it. You can get fabulous new stuff, yay! Yes. So, very excited about them. I'd like to shout out Souls Rolls. Um, 
they are an amazing creator who has a gorgeous website. Um, you can check them out at soulsrolls.com um, or at soulsrolls on any social medias. They are a fabulous creator who helps other creators understand how to deal with burnout and how to ensure that the self-care that you're doing is actually working. Um, they have either weekly or monthly slots that you can sign up for to have a discussion with them. And their website is full of fabulous articles about how to actually survive in this game and how to thrive in this game. So absolutely go head over to the website and find out if they can help you organize your brain. I spent about an hour with them and we organized two years worth of business planning. So there's... <laughs> It's very useful. There's next we have Realm Warp Media, who is the publisher of all of the adventures that we are going to be writing here on Magnificent Mythologies. All of them will be featured on the Realm Warp Media page, which is a platinum selling page on DM Skilled. So uh, let's make them an even let's let let's get them to like Adamantium if we can with these fabulous adventures as soon as we release them go and grab them do the thing next we have phoenix dice we love phoenix dice phoenix dice is a fabulous organization that makes all of their dice from recycled materials because they love the world we live in just as much as the worlds we play in so if you'd like some dice if you're a filthy little dice goblin i see you out there i see you hit exclamation point raffle and you will be entered to win a pair, a set of Phoenix Dice today. And the lovely thing about Phoenix Dice is not only do you get a set of fabulous dice, you get any set of fabulous dice on their entire website. You can pick anything you want. They are all gorgeous, all based on fabulous monsters from the Monster Manual. My personal favorite right now is the Gin, which is this beautiful light blue with like gold flakes inside and gold lettering. It's just, oh, oh, it's so pretty. And finally, we've got D&D &D Beyond and Hero Forge, our two affiliate links. If you wanna go down to the About section, go hit them up and say, hey, go get you the Strixhaven if you don't have it yet, or on Tuesday, they're releasing the first adventure for um, Critical Role, their first actual module being released so go hit that up i think if you get it early you might get like a set of digital dice or some craziness like that so that's fun um but use our affiliate links and we'll get a little taste and that'll be nice so that we can get the lights on over here that's always fun i like light and now why don't we write a fucking story oh <laughs> yeah so first off, hey, Bunny, tell me, what the hell are we talking about today? What the hell are we talking about today? We are going to be talking about trickster gods. Yay! It's happening. Oh. It's happening. That's why I said nothing is, absolutely nothing is going to make sense. But yeah. everything will work out in the end, which I think is the best way to describe what trickster gods bring to a pantheon. Absolutely. Specifically, we are going to be working with uh, two trickster gods, from, uh, one from the Maori people, the Maui, and Ishu, who is from the Yoruba in Africa. Very nice. All right, so first questions first. Hmm. I know Maui from Moana. Like, Fair, I'm not, which, not was, gonna, not which was the pretend. biggest mainstream introduction to him, and, and uh, I, I think, that was like big and really i'm only saying that because it was disney of all people right. uh that put the story out which definitely was gonna um i remember honestly and here's me dating myself i remember when there were concept art for moana put like out on tumblr just for people going things to look out for i forget which year it was i just know it was so long ago but yes <laughs> no, but that, yeah, that would that. be the main place yeah, but that would be the main place that most people would know of him. Awesome. He is... So how how accurate is that description? Not it, at all is a perfectly acceptable answer. <laughs> it's a mixed bag. It's not that the okay. movie didn't represent him right. 
it's that the best representation of him in the movie is probably the song where he says all of the things that he's done. The You're yep. Welcome song that yep. tells you that it, where he like goes through his basically his list of feats and why he's so important to yeah. the um to humanity. So was he like so so Maui was in fact a friend to humanity and then just messed up a bunch of stuff. He was the quintessential um uh I'm trying to figure what it's like the, the saying where uh warning tale it's i know that's not really what it is but oh yeah, yeah absolutely absolutely cautionary I, tale I, yes thank you quintessential like, cautionary you, tale of how, said that i was like <laughs> it left my brain i was it was just gone See, it's just, and then like, when, <laughs> he's a quintessential like ca like cautionary tale of these are the things that happen he jumps before uh, bleh. he doesn't look before he leaps he um but the things that he does works out. He has to be mischievous in order to move things forward. They have consequences, but those consequences may not work out for him. They do, bleh, they do work out for other people or everyone else. Fabulous. Okay. All right. Getting that under me. Okay. So emotionally, I get that. I get that. I understand, you know, there's that, that movement towards good, not always quite getting care of this. Yeah. <laughs> I have that, too many that, tabs up. Oh, jeez. That, that chaotic neutral, like, moving towards chaotic good. Not not always quite getting there. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that the mood? If anything, oh, 2022 is the year of the trickster gods. It's time to move forward, whether we like it or not. Right, and absolutely. <laughs> Oh um, my God. All right, so tell me about this other one. What was the what was the name? Ishu. Uh E S H U. Ishu. Also E S U. And he is okay. uh well m most of the things you were uh they represent multi they're multifaceted gods. He's not Absolutely. just one thing. Uh Ishu specifically represents uh trickery crossroads, misfortune, death is like travelers, but also messages. He mm -hmm. uh, is a primordial kind of thing. So it's not that he's, it's odd to say, most deities are made as representations of either lessons, natural things, or uh, like I said, cautionary tales that yeah, are then used to teach stories and move forward where primordial divinity is like, they don't have a lesson to teach you they simply are and you have to understand that so when something like fate comes into play a uh, physical manifestation of it holds a lot of power and that's what issue is yeah there is so one of the things that i love um in researching like both mythologies and mm -hmm. how they sort of relate to like fairy tales and folklore and stuff like that is just the the concept that like up until 100 years ago up until we started Disneyfying all of these tales, um, yeah. every single one was a cautionary tale. It was literally a way for you to help your child understand um, the world is not the pretty Without place you want it to be. Without having to figure out firsthand. That's yeah. <laughs> it's like Little Red Riding Hood is a is a tale just about hey, be vigilant. There are wild animals. In the world, mm -hmm. it will not everybody who you. says hello is going to be a new friend. Yeah, and there is, and look beyond someone's clothes to who they in fact are. Like judge a person mm -hmm. by who they are, not by what they wear. You know, and it was, mm -hmm. you know, because if you didn't have <laughs> that concept, your child would literally wander into the woods that were right next door at the time. And, and just go to town and just be like, yeah. la, la, la. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. Climb inside of this bear's mouth. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's warm it's in here. It's so it's pretty. It's so cute. <laughs> How do you get a bear? <laughs> Come here, little bear. As somebody that has, in fact, faced down more than one bear at a time <laughs> um, in, like, in real you life. <laughs> There it is. Why you found yourself in these situations. There, <laughs> there is, so I grew up in a tiny little town 
like uh, of like 800 <laughs> people in the mountains of Colorado. So literally most okay, apartment complexes <laughs> in major cities have more people in them than the town that I grew up in. Yeah. And so <laughs> there is a, so we would have, if it rained too much or if it was too dry in the spring, in the summer, the berries wouldn't bloom the way that they should. And so the bears wouldn't have anything to eat. So they would just come down from the mountainside and dig in the dumpsters. I, and, I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's fine. And uh, we, so there was there was a year where it was just so wet, we couldn't figure out why, and it really fucked with all the berry growth. And so mm -hmm. there was a night where the sheriff in town uh, actually clocked 22 separate black bears on Main Street. Not like in the alley well, or anything, but just walking Why did they squat up to Main go Street. to your town? Why did they squat <laughs> because we to we live in a like this is one of the things where like this is not like the East Coast where like if you say I live in a tiny little town there is like a there's metropolis like a ten people. miles down <laughs> like there's well it's just that there's like there's you're part of a tiny little town but the border that you have is with another town and really you're yeah. a suburb of a major city you know like there's that's, that's a thing. Whereas out in Colorado, it's like the town itself was one mile across. It had less than a thousand people and the closest mm. town was 10 miles away. Our grocery oh. store was a 45 minute drive. Um, and, oh no, like don't don't make that noise. Like my thing is like- I have I'm to like, make that noise. <laughs> I would explain to my friends in DC, I'm like, okay, you just spent an hour like wandering around the parking lot of Trader Joe's looking for a parking spot or fighting traffic, I just spent 45 minutes driving through some of the most beautiful country you will ever experience in your life. And, and no joke, like it is stunningly I, beautiful. So I'm, I'm currently mid Midwest, I'm not as far as Colorado, mm. but as someone who also has to make some long drives, they're not all beautiful. Uh, yeah. <laughs> No, no, that's, that's, I couldn't, I couldn't do. I couldn't you, do the middle of the country. You lucked out. I'm saying I'm jealous. Yeah. You lucked out yeah. because yeah. not all the roads is pretty. No, no, I just couldn't Which do it. What gets me through is a Night Vale episode. It's just, uh. <laughs> So yes, yes. So that's where I come from there. <laughs> With my wild animals running around. I have gotten side eye from a deer before. <laughs> at least I no, no. At least they side-eyed you. One just decided, I know you stopped for me to go back, but I'm gonna come back in front of your car and kick it. And now I'll cross yeah. the street. And I'm just like, leave my they car are alone. <laughs> <laughs> they are mean. I literally Bambi ran was I was alive. texting. It was. It was. Dear our monsters. They're not majestic. Like, they are mean little idiots. <laughs> and they will eat your garden. They are <laughs> In, in your ray, like people are like mule deer. Yeah, they're just giant rats. Like that's what, they just they just eat your tree. They'll eat your tree. <laughs> well, luckily there's no deer on the island, so. Oh, thank God, thank God. No, I you still love them. I still love deer. deer. As a treat. I think it's fabulous. There is, uh, but. Yes. Anyway, so trickster gods. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, so I think it's important because what we were saying or what I brought up before, I think it's important to kind of go back to why trickster gods play an important role in not most cultures, but more so specifically our adventure. I think that would be cool. Absolutely. Um, so wait, did I so did I answer your questions first and foremost before I move forward? About okay, who so they we got are Maui and, and Isha. Ishu. 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 Maui mm -hmm. and Ishu. Okay. So everything ends with the U today. The yeah, right. <laughs> but yeah, we have uh so we have them two, and they have multiple names. That's where I was going when I said they were multifaceted. They have other titles. Uh specifically, uh Ishu is also known as Fa and Legba and uh, I thought. Ooh, it would Legba. Be... Okay, I know that. Yeah, there's two now. That is that is a whole thing. There are uh, there's 
but like what you keep seeing on most social social media most really yeah. all media and it'll be kind of what i'll say american horror story because that yeah. i feel like was yeah. a lot of people's introduction to that yeah. and there are two versions of that person of that representation of that spirit one is a nice old guy with a little pipe and he's your friend yeah. and he's going to help you get messages and the other one wants to eat your soul and they are two different things <laughs> they are night and day they are literally heads and tails of the same point when day goes yeah. down he gives his hat to the bad one and then he start fucking with people like yeah, absolutely. Well, and I feel I feel like that's one of the important things too is that when you're dealing with um when you're dealing with spirits, when you're dealing with gods, when you're dealing with mm -hmm. all like monsters, all of like the incredibly powerful things um in mythology, they were created to be complex. And human beings, yes, I think initially because it was truly an exploration of what's going on inside us and what's going on in our world and the complexity mm -hmm. that lives there and the duality that lives there. Mm -hmm. All of these beings were in fact that complex. And now people don't like complexity. So we try to sort of bottle they, what's they going on. They want everything to be compartmentalized and compressed yeah. and not be as deep as, as people as they were supposed to be. Like you said, Absolutely. to represent the internal kind of complex nebula that's happening inside of us at all times. Why wouldn't these guys be just as intricate and complicated? Well, and sure, and especially if I think they, they helped, if they helped create us and they helped create the world, you know, of course they mm -hmm. would have to be complex enough to understand that complexity. So, yeah. <laughs> most people go the opposite like part of that spectrum of because they are different and because they made us that means they have to be infallible they have to be perfect so the things that they represent means that that's all they represent that means that's what they have to be at all times and i'm supposed yeah. to be like them and i just kind of go your your religious trauma is showing please right. please stop trying to cookie cut everything into the rules of christianity yeah no. <laughs> yeah no 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 that's a that's a huge, that's a huge issue. So my father was a priest. So I'm intimately familiar uh -huh. with Twinsies, PKs. Yay, PKs. PKs. <laughs> oh, my God. oh my God. Okay, <laughs> fabulous. Go ahead, I'm So sorry. I know you sorry. experimented a lot in your 20s. I get it, I see you. Ah. I see you, honey. Not to the flex, <laughs> the <laughs> absolutely absolutely pk for life <laughs> we have got um there's but i it's just it's just one of those things in christianity where there is a i have known true christians in my life mm -hmm. and the vast majority of people that i've met that call themselves christian are just not like they have so little resemblance to um the actual book mm -hmm the actual teachings that they're supposed mm -hmm. to be modeling um that i'm like you just don't call yourself that like just don't don't do it you are something else you are a Your teacher's pets yeah yeah i'm like you're a narcissistic greed monster and you don't represent the best of this you know they, um they represent what's supposed to be the best of this and it's well it's, it's half the time is not even of their own doing it's everything that they have been kind of forced to do and then but yeah. they they were taken by the machine they they were fully yeah. zapped they they what was the what was the movie the house the stepford wives they were fully stepped oh yeah absolutely and it's like you can't some of them you can't be mad at but when every i think everyone who has been stepfurted reaches a point where they go now wait a second and you've got an option to either go now wait a second this isn't what it's supposed to be or you go now wait a second that's how that works. And then you keep doing it so you can be better at their version of it. Yeah. And the people who unfortunately want to go deeper into the Stepford pyramid, that's what people think true questions are. And everyone else yeah. is like, I know what they're doing isn't correct, but that's not going to stop how I feel. Oh, absolutely. I think that there yeah. is, and I, I think that that is, it's something, it's one of the reasons that um, the sort of, the modern religion started taking hold mm -hmm. because they gave people easier answers. Yeah, you know, which is it's all like, people wanted to do. Here are the rules. Yeah, here are the rules. Do these things and you'll get in heaven. Yeah. You know, you're good. 
everything's fine. You know, it's real easy. You can do bad things and say, I'm sorry, and it's fine. For me, just in real life, that's a huge issue. Yeah. Because I don't believe you. Because accountability you say is a thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, I've literally had people be like, I'm really sorry. I was like, no, I, first of all, I don't believe you. Second of all, I do not accept your apology. Um, mm -hmm. There is, this is the fourth time you've done it. And every time you say you're sorry, and I no longer believe you. If you're actually <laughs> sorry, what you're going to do is you're going to change the behavior. Like, that's yeah. what's going to happen. So. And yeah. that's a big thing in other when other cultures have the same kind of figures uh if you would like to put up what they are it's really weird to say like they're literary um not outlines that's not the word you can you see in real time my brain trying to chug out the word right <laughs> it's, it's, it's a little sad to watch i'm sorry no, but literary traditions <laughs> yeah, literary no, tra yes I don't want to say labels, but it's probably labels. What's a synonym sure. for labels? Um, your literary tropes? Yes, literary... tropes. Okay. The word was tropes, I couldn't remember. <laughs> okay, there it is. <laughs> I'm amazing at Wordle, but to ask there. me to do it in real life, and I can't. Okay. It's Wordle, yeah. I'm, I'm on it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, if you were to, uh, it's weird to put deities in literary tropes, but if you were to line up, it's, it's like, for example, Ishu, it, Hermes is a Greek equivalent to Ishii. Yeah. The same way you do technically Sekhmet and Persephone come from the same lineage of stories and oral traditions that yeah. became those culturally, those deities. Yeah. And well, I mean, the thing is that what you're dealing with is you're dealing with archetypes and, and like yes. literary ha -ha. tropes come from those archetypes, archetypes. you know. Yep. So absolutely. All right. So we've got two fabulous trickster gods. Mm -hmm. Why don't you? In so which their I feel are fate and destiny and death and doing what's right and respecting one's culture and what was it? Traditions. That's what. I, but that's what it was. And fabulous. the respect that comes with following traditions. But we said that trickster gods are specifically for progress. Yeah. Our adventure is going to be the duality of such things. I love it. All right, so tell me, um, like, what we are, what is going to be our focus today? Are we going to be focusing on sort of the, are Maui and Ishu, in fact, going to be part of the story, or are they just inspiration for the story? They have uh, NPC representations, kind of like they are supposed okay. to be the trickster god that kind of like brought everything together. They've orchestrated everything. Um, so all the adventures that you're doing is like, eventually you were all gonna head, kind of tell telling them. Eventually you're gonna head to the same place, but the lesson you learn is based off of which adventure you do. Fabulous, okay. So they have like NPC representations of them throughout the, uh, throughout the adventure. Awesome, I love it. Okay, so tell me what is, what's at the heart? of this adventure? Why are we going on it? The heart of the adventure, I think, I think it was uh, that not all change is bad. Fabulous. The change, like kind of like change has to happen. It doesn't have to be scary as long as you can accept that it won't change everything. Mm -hmm. It will just change. Absolutely. That you can, in fact, like for me, what that looks like is there's mm -hmm. a difference between change and evolution. Yeah. Evolution indicates that you are altering something that you don't like about yourself and moving forward without abandoning everything else. Without abandoning everything. And that's the important part, without abandoning everything else. And it can take Fabulous. multiple forms, like uh, progress in like cultural progress. Does it mean the end of tradition? Uh, like Absolutely. machine progress doesn't mean the end of hard work. Personal yep. progress doesn't mean the end of old relationships. Those like those, yes. and if you show, so like that's the core of the adventure and it has 
multiple represent representatives in like the little books you can take that will lead you to the same thing. Awesome. Yay. Ooh, okay. Well, why yeah. don't we pop over to our little outline over here and let's get started making a fabulous adventure here. So Excited. first, what is, what is the, because you, you keep talking about like various adventures that you can have with this, but it all leads to the same place. So where is it leading? Where are we getting to? We are getting to, so I had, so I had like this rough uh, outline of, mm -hmm. um, you have a old family that was usurped and they need, and basically uh, the goal is you're going to end up helping with a coup. It just depends okay. on how you're going to help. With Fabulous. <laughs> Fabulous. All right. So this, so we've got, um, is this, is there any sort of, is there any sort of emotional judgment about the two rulers that are battling right now? That there's like, um, you've got a, you've got somebody that kicks somebody else off the throne and now that person is going to take the throne back, right? Mm. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm trying to, I'm trying, I'm looking at what I have so I can, so I can answer your question properly. Fabulous. <laughs> There's an old family uh, that used to be, that because when we were talking, I told you I'd come up with like, with this island and like the setting. It's kind of mm -hmm. like so there was an original people on the island uh, as in the, you know like the ruling family kind of. Okay. They were used. They were usurped, and that's who's on the throne. Um, so it's the original rightful rulers trying to get their throne back. Okay, so original ruling family is usurped and is now trying to regain grown. Um, you had mentioned something about original people on the island. Mm -hmm. Okay. So are these, so is it, is, is it essentially that there is, there was like um, a colonial effort and that is mm -hmm. what. If, uh, they were, there's a, not a colonial effort, just the people who were there interacted with deities and had offspring. And so that oh, offspring okay. family, yeah, kind of, and it kind of just bled out to the island, but the, the pure blood or like the royal family, they were there on the island or they were, they're supposed to be. Okay, so the old royal family is fully human and then the usurpers are half deity? Uh, other, other way around, they were um, the okay. people who were usurped. Like the humans finally overtook the demigods, kind of a thing. Like their I family see. went down to All right. nothing, and then they got usurped. Original family is demigods. Mm -hmm. Is demigods and and god blooded blooded um, humans. Um, I don't want to say kind of regular humans. They, so. I, uh, the non-powered. <laughs> <laughs> humans banded together to wipe out the demigods and yeah. usurp their throne. All right, cool. So we've got that. Um, and now the demi, now, so now there's just like one family of demigods left. Essentially. Yeah, it's just not even kind of like in hiding a little bit. That's one of the like people that you're going to help. It's this old lady who is uh, trying to still do the old ways and like do offerings like they're supposed to, to appease the gods. Nothing bad has happened since this new family took over, but also this old lady has never stopped doing the offerings yeah. to them. Kind of a thing. And she needs help. <laughs> family Jam got slept. They are trying to regain their Brown. Okay. Mm. All right. So we have got. So is the resolution is the actual like chapter. So in the end, do they get their throne back? 
or is it they might get their throne back they might not they might are there multiple endings that could happen there's there's kind of multiple endings there's an open-ended one of maybe this what you've done is enough kind of a thing but leaves you wondering if you could do more and then the other one is um yes they were able to get the throne back and it'll be better than ever but it's like it's a twist is it because you helped this person get to the throne that they got their throne back and it's better than ever or is it the wild i i like wild cards in my in my games when i run Absolutely. sessions so there's Absolutely. there's the wild card which i was like is going to be someone who is already there who they had as a baby kind of like at at the palace and you don't know that that's a god-blooded child that they've raised in their ways so they know okay. the ways of the people but they'll be a rightful ruler kind of a thing so they got it back and it'll be better than ever okay all right fabulous so i'm trying to think about where to begin then so we have got um it seems like there's a lot going on so let's parse this out um storyline by storyline okay gotcha so what is the first storyline that we're going to be dealing with is it the old lady and the offerings uh yeah the old lady and the offerings um what did we say? All right, so when what was, is what uh, is her old name? one's trek? Uh the old lady was uh I have notes. <laughs> Maju. M A J U. Names are hard. <laughs> Fabulous. So Maju. Um, and she's the old queen. I didn't think of what with what they would be would they be the old queen or would they be kind of like a when one of the tricksters like who changed their form to take on the oh, form sure. of this old lady kind of a thing which which one do you think which one do you think would be would be fun so i think i think that the queen would be better in this situation because if their storyline mm -hmm. is so it hasn't been making... that long so it hasn't been that long between these because i hadn't put a time frame on it sure there is what i'm thinking is that generally you don't want one god to be making offerings to a different god mm -hmm. that oh, they, they would be making both... an offering to themselves they were like i'm so, just an old lady doing the offerings kind of a thing sure there is i feel so for me what that does emotionally is it diminishes the weight of that storyline so. the reason being that this trickster god gets to make choices about what they're going to do regardless and they're just at that point trying to get somebody to do something for them they're trying to get people to give them worship you know whereas if it is a queen who is like a oh. demigod and there's like maybe a familial there's a familial um connection there that creates more emotional weight for that character um it's no longer I a sort of selfish mean. motivation hmm It also then creates, unless you want this to be um, like a quest giver and the offerings are something that, the transport, you know. The transport, that's, that's kind of what I, it's not that you're doing the offerings, you're helping, with, what it appears as is you're helping this old lady to their journey to the temple. They need an escort. They are old and feeble and you must help them. Okay. It'll be like, if somebody were to actually take them on this pilgrimage, then they could make it to the temple and do their offering. Uh, and then it's revealed that I'm actually, you know, this oh, okay. All, this all right. That, is, that kind of kind story. Of thing. Yeah, that all kind right. of thing. So that is, all right. So that's a much more sort of simple arc. I thought that they were going to be a little like it was going to be part of a larger thing. If that is their whole arc, absolutely. And then it becomes that, you know, the very much the yeah, sort of it, like the gods like the guest right thing where it's like the reason that you give shelter to everybody is because they might be a god in disguise it's because of it. yeah so it's that small bit of stories like this uh, and then um when they when they reach the temple and they do the offering this reveal you know actually you get a blessing and then that blessing could be so this is more like a side mission than not where okay. you get this treasure if you help this old lady and it will help you on the bigger task of trying to help with the throne so in that situation, what we can do is we can create, we can make that chapter one. Because I always like okay. to have in adventures, An like- introductory kind of thing to help people. Yeah, and that give them stuff. a chance to role play with each other for a while. Because if this is people, I always like to look at it yeah. as like, hey, if these are people that have never met each other before and they've got new characters, 
how can we help them get comfortable in the story? So I feel like that would be a great intro. So first, we've got Maju. Are they a direct representation of one of the tricksters? Um, or are they just sort of yeah, trickstery uh, in general? Maui and, no, it's both of them. It's kind of, both of them kind of mixed together. Uh, Maui, it's like, it, the reason that it's an old woman is probably because uh, representation on Maui's side, like Maui's grandmother was so strong that like, this is gonna be an old monk. Like I, I was thinking it would be funny because really she could do it herself, but it, so the stat block for her would be like an old monk kind of a thing. Yeah. Because Maui's grandmother was so powerful. She could take off her bottom jaw and use it as a weapon. Like that, uh, <laughs> that is one of the tales for Maui. Um, the old woman would be adhering to her ancestors tradition is a big thing about representation, which is a strong re reoccurring theme in Maori culture. Fabulous. All right, so Maju, a representation of Maui. Um, is an old woman trying to get to Temple. A temple. All right, that is so. Chapter one. Um, I'm gonna put that as a secondary. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> um, I thought it. I thought it would be funny because it's the the quest, quote unquote, that you would be given if you find it uh, would be called Portage Crossing, which is uh, is. which which is what it's called when you take a boat over dry land, which is technically part of oh. what you have to do is, oh, is carry this woman over over land you i love it crossing <laughs> there is yay there is all right so first let's say so how it's many characters <laughs> good thank god thank god <laughs> so how does so how does this um how does this uh the crew how do the adventurers find these people find these quests uh yeah as, as how do we start like, off as... now the the island is kind of a it's a port it's a, like a on the way place so you guys were already on a boat together and you they could come up with different places that they were all going but they end up on this adventure together kind of like the like um just like on the way to our destination we had this mini adventure where we had to stop at this port um, at this pier. Sure. So what? So what we're doing? So we're starting with they start in the port. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you, in the your, port, your vessel has taken has taken uh, shelter at this port, and you're going to be here for a few days. So it gives you time to maybe make a few extra coin for your journey. Sure. Okay. So let's start with um, intro. Um, the adventurers were sailing elsewhere when a storm hit and forced them to take shelter on this island there we go so that way it can be yep. part of any adventure anybody can just drop this right into whatever adventure they're doing already um and you don't it can and it'll fit whatever backstory people want to have mm -hmm. with it they can be mm, anywhere all right so in this port tell me is this um all right so chapter one adventures land in the is there only one port on this island uh yeah there's okay. one port on the, on, the, on the bigger island and then there's a smaller ports. one and that's where the castle is that has the royal family that controls everything there. It's like a okay dungeon. so they but but nobody would be allowed to go to that port unless they had business with the royal family right yep okay yeah. so adventures land only. in the port city of what's the name of your city <laughs> we come up with names one was tanifa but that's just how you say i believe that was just how you say dragon <laughs> uh he was, um, we also had doula island and doula is uh doula island so birth giving mm -hmm. island okay yep. all right there's all right cool 
There's and Duma um, is also what it's called to be uh, cursed in in uh, South Africa, Ethiopia. It's specific cursed in uh, Ethiopia specifically. A doula huh? would be a curse to shape shift. Um, it was a big thing because they don't have werewolves; they have wear hyenas. And if you oh, were cursed yeah. with a doula, then you were cursed to change into a hyena. Oh, okay. So, All right, fabulous. That was so, one of the things. Got... All the royal family can transform. It, oh. it, that's, that's what makes them God touched. I see. All right. So there's so this transforming. So really, it's one God touched family usurping another God touched family. Mm, no, the God touched family is the ones that all the humans rose up to take out. That's what we said. Oh, I see. Okay, so the ones that have been usurped, they can all change mm -hmm. shape. Okay, yeah. fabulous. Okay. Um, all right, so adventures land in the port city of, how do you spell the doula? Is it just D-U-L-A? Yep. Okay, fabulous. And the port city of doula. Tell me about this city. Tell me what's new and interesting about this city. What's new and interesting about this city? It is a trade center. Um, like I said, it is an on the way place. We were, I wasn't sure where people would put it, but it's kind of like, you could put it really between any two big cities, not cities. That would sure. be ridiculous. Um, coasts is what I'm trying to say. Uh, in our case, we were saying that when it came to New Zealand and uh, in South Africa, the only way that they would ever meet in the middle would be like to make this kind of island that has all of these imports from both things. So it's a fishing yeah. village. You could also get, or here you can get magic potions made from things that specifically grow on the island. So this is, so, so the nice thing about this is that it's kind a, of a yeah. place. It's a trade center where you can have people from anywhere. Um, mm -hmm. A trade center um, for several routes transporting all kinds of goods. Um, there are several local establishments catering to the various um, the various visitors to the island. What is the island known for? What like like every trade city has to like have their sort main of a export? Uh, yeah. I've been I've been thinking about that. I was going to say, because uh, the little dot, Dula Island, the, the, where the where the family castle was, like people were, that's near a volcano. So they could have specific access to volcanic glass for something special. Okay, so that's like fabulous. That's a big thing. That way you only get it, access to it from the royal family. And that's why it's something that only they can control. Why don't we say, because they are Gottish, why don't we say that there is, uh, that their main export is like, two things one volcanic glass weaponry um mm -hmm, which definitely. is very which is very powerful um yep. uh it's and let's say okay various visitors to the island um its main exports are volcanic glass weaponry known it's called dual for steel it's <laughs> right there is Volcanic glass weaponry, weaponry known as Dula Steel and prized for its ability to be very easily enchanted. Um, mm -hmm. There is, which would give them the opportunity to like create a whole bunch of like magical weapons and stuff like that if they want. Um, in addition, the artisans of the island have learned to create um, doula steel um, decanters, which <laughs> keep Why? oceans and other liquids safe for far longer than traditional means. All right, cool. So we've got that, we know. All right, so people started coming here for the volcanic glass and it turned, it built up into a trade center. Um, fabulous. It. 
So we've got that. Um, where is where is the family located that you're going to need to eventually get to? Uh, the the original family. We have to give them a name. The original family, or the family of Maju. The, thank you, thank you. Okay, yeah. um, Maju is now the family name. They have a different first name, but they are now called Maju. <laughs> okay, so what is the old lady's first name then? If she is, if her last name is Maju. Why would you do this to me? <laughs> because I'm a bad person. I'm a terrible, terrible human. <laughs> uh, say Fa, F-A, which is one of the other names for Ishu and is there is when they are a representation of fate and destiny, which I think Fabulous. is a pretty good representation of our lovely lady. And that's a lovely, that just rolls right off the tongue. Fa Maju. Mm. There's, that's lovely. Um, okay. Of Maui and Ishu. Um, okay, so... All right, so the Maju family, um, where are they on the island? Uh, they would be kind of uh, at the furthest point after running away those who did kind of survive and kind of uh, and, and got away and escaped from the uprising. I would say they would be on the far side of the island, which is why this okay. old lady, quote unquote. If they need, if yeah. they need to be the first quest givers, then we need the boat to crash instead of get safely to port. So we can have really? the boat crash right next to them so that they're the first people that these adventurers, because otherwise this whole adventure could be them exploring this town and they really? literally never meet these other people, you know? So <laughs> there's, it's one of those where it's like when you're doing a one shot, when you're doing well, a no, one I, shot. Yeah, because these, I guess these were, these were the ones, I was going to have it be, I mean, what you're saying definitely could be if that's what they do right at the beginning, they crash into them, that puts them smack dab in the middle of the plot. But well, I you have, have to, you have to remember that. for, well, you have to remember that for one shots, there is, um, if we are aiming at a one shot, if we're aiming at a longer campaign, that's fine, but I'm not sure that we okay. have the time to do that in one day. So if we're dealing gotcha. with, so this could, we could absolutely do like the first adventure today, and then you can come back and we'll do the next adventure. It'll be fabulous. Yeah. There's but there's a, uh, but uh, we have to remember- Them crashing is, uh, is a great idea, guy. I, I wouldn't have been able, I can't think of how yeah. else to get them over there other than to have yeah. a merchant giving out quest and they requested an escort to the temple. Sure, there is, and there's- but I like your and, idea and of things, it being hectic. Yeah, well, it, it starts with like a disaster, things like that, but it also allows for us to immediately get action going instead yeah. of like sort of, what do you guys want to do? Where do you want it. to go? Yeah. And trying to, one, one of the issues that I've found is when you try to force players to go to a certain place, they will always resist it. Like, <laughs> so just being like, nope, you crash here. These are the first people that you meet, you know? Um, so let's say, all right, adventurers crash into adventurers crash into the island after the storm. Um, inland is out, around the coast. Around the coast is the port city of Dula. Okay. Adventures crash into the island after the storm. They crash next to a cave occupied by the former ruling family of Maju. Mm -hmm. Right, cool. Um, that also sets it up so it can be like a thing where one of the family members as a god touched you know like has incredible powers to, like repair things or something like that and they can help yeah with the boat if these adventurers help their mom get to the temple that she needs to um okay fabulous so we've got so the adventurers crash 
Um, we've got a description of Ma of Dula, why that's important. Mm -hmm. um, all right, if they're crashing right next to it, who all do they meet in the family? So they meet Fa Maju. Yes. Uh, and then these are just the insert list of NPC names I had just in case. Right, yeah. <laughs> You have uh, a guy, uh, one, two, a guy, his wife, and then there are five kids. So they'll have five uh, kids. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Shmeet, Fa, Maju, her husband. Oh, no, and uh, it's, it's her son. Her son, his wife, their five kids. Oh, I see. So there's Fa, Maju, son, wife, wife. five grandkids. Okay, good, yeah. okay, so it's three generations. All right, Fama Ju. Okay. There's me, Fama Ju, her son, her, just to make it sort of easier to understand for people that are reading this for the first time. Yeah, daughter in law. Do everything yeah. in, yeah. Her daughter in law and her five grandchildren. Okay, fabulous. Yep. Um, for Famaju, uh, mm. we know that Famaju is in fact a trickster god. So there is, so that's fabulous. So we can do that. And then what that would make, what, uh, why don't we say that her son and her, her son is in fact, you know, a demigod. Then. A demigod. And yeah. then the grandchildren are god blooded. Oh, y'all have god touched your blood, yeah. And then there is, and then you've got like, the daughter-in-law is somebody that will we'll find an interesting like concept for her, you know, to either she, fuck yeah, with she, all of them. She <laughs> had to impress. I'm about to say she had to impress mom, mom-in-law some way. She's pretty mm -hmm. good. But she she's just, she's a girl from the island. And she's so yeah. she's like yeah. Her family will be there. There'll be something interesting about her. Fabulous. I love it. All right. So the adventurers meet them. Um, and, and now right, we have so, them invested because there's children. Yeah, so <laughs> there's little, children. Little boops. Uh, but if you've got um, if you've got a thing that's like that, nothing bad. Like that, the that even after the usurpation, um, nothing crazy has happened, um, and that's okay. Yeah. Um, but do it we want to? It was more of a you that... guys don't deserve to be in charge kind of a thing. And like sure. they, they stormed the castle. They they got to the point where they had him at night point and said, So go be something. You can go be dirt poor now. We're taking over and don't try to do anything. But nobody, I guess, it'll be like, and I let them do it because I love these people, but they're idiots and I could have destroyed them in a second. Kind of a yeah. thing. <laughs> There's all right. So we have got um let's talk about that destruction. Mm -hmm. What is the threat? That they're holding back like is there what is the mm. what is the reason that this ruling family continually did offerings there okay so one of the versions of issues is fa who again is the the god of mm -hmm. fate he did so by he had 16 eyes and he did so by peering through windows and being able to see what was coming and his uh one of the other versions of him issues job was to open and close the windows kind of thing and doing those offerings it was making way for fate so it was going through your house it's like a a, th a colloquialism or like just something you do like people who uh stir their tea clockwise you just you go in the window you go to your house you open all the windows in your house to allow goodness to come in and you close all the windows in your house to keep your good fortune inside yeah kind of thing so she would go through and have everyone open their windows people haven't been doing it but this one house has and that'll be maju kind of doing their job technically and opening the windows and closing them for fate. Okay, fabulous. So, um, let so me ask you, of, do you want eye these? of fate will, could give you like vision of some, there is a spell and I cannot remember what it is that actually does let you kind of, um, it's supposed to be like, you can see all of your opponent's defenses and be able to block them. What is that? So that's spell? foresight. It's a ninth level spell. Yeah. Yeah, that I is. mean, this is an enchanted item that yeah. gives them one use of foresight. Yeah. 
That would be, that's intensely powerful. Absolutely. Because what foresight does is it gives you like advantage in all your attacks and advantage in all your saving. Exactly. Like essentially nobody can touch you. Okay, fabulous. So you, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> we can absolutely do that. We can have that could the be the treasure paint. or the reward. Um, you get one use. You just get the one. <laughs> there is, um, well, you could get, you could get like a, a potion of foresight in a mm -hmm. doula glass in a doula in a doula steel container you know yep, so it, yeah all right so we'll do i'll put that down here under rewards potion of foresight in a doula steel decanter so could that be the other art a little flask of doulas of, of the of the doula flask so i always like to wait i always am like I not to wait thinking of we're art. gonna yeah, we're gonna we're gonna come up with a bunch of stuff today. So mm -hmm. let's hold off on the art and see okay. what really Sorry, my develops. Chugging. <laughs> no, no, absolutely, absolutely, as a joke. There is so we've got. Uh, so you meet all of them. All right. So the point of this first quest is going to be to go and do a ritual that has to do with the opening and closing windows. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. Um, in that situation, is there a temple to um, Ishu on the island, or is this just a tradition that they have? It's a, it's a tradition that they had that would have been introduced by them. The temple, because it is like a, a, a mixture of both things, I kind of don't want it to be one. A specific absolutely, unless, absolutely. unless we pull a Dionysus and Apollo who shared a temple, and they would sure they would literally they they had the same temples. Yeah, there's um we could uh I feel like we could absolutely create a situation where on the island there is like uh some old woman maybe like maybe like the the grandmother of the daughter in law or something mm -hmm. like that who has like the big house in town with dozens of windows and she every single day has done this thing mm -hmm. you know something like that um but what i'm what i want to see is like why are they going to go on this quest with fa uh if it's not to its specific temple what does Fa really need? Um, well, Fa's quest was going to be represented, was, was going to be the thing of, uh, that your ancestors, bleh, that the respect to your ancestors' traditions is what is kind of keep, is what is actually keeping the island moving. So it was less about her being, she would be a representation of the God kind of a thing. So let's do, so let's do this. We'll have, um, like the grandmother of the daughter-in-law um, doing this thing, but now she's gotten so old that she can no longer open and close her own windows anymore. That there okay. is, that it's too much for her. And Fa is going to, like, needs to go help her do that. That this is, this is the last person on the island that was keeping this tradition alive. Mm -hmm. And now that she has stopped doing it, something is brewing. Right. Yeah, because um, then because it'd be like I kept like it, they could have a whole thing. Is that's why they got married? She made a promise to this woman: as long as you do this, I'll keep good fortune. What's the best fortune than marrying my son? Right. My, your wife, your daughter got to marry uh, into a god's family. That's the best fortune I could offer you. So now instead of then instead of Fa going being the, like Fa can be the quest giver. Do you want to have the the daughter in law go on the quest? Yeah. Okay. Fabulous. So. Let's do, all right, so they meet from the um, um, They tell the adventurers about the, um, the traditions of the island. Um, yeah, the ritual can be called the Dance of Fate. Okay. Which is uh, about the, yeah, the ritual of, of the opening island, and closing the... Including the... Dance of Fate, where the, let's say the matriarch of the family opens all the windows in the house 
to let in good fortune and then closes all the windows to keep that fortune in the home. All right, fabulous. Um, the Islanders, let's see. The Islanders have not been keeping up this tradition and I'd like there to be some sort of repercussion about the fact that they haven't been doing this, that there is something, whether it is, um, you know, like trade is down or, you know, like they can't, like the doula steel has started breaking or something like that, that it's like really what this is that like the God touched were actually enchanting, like the fact that they were powerful, that they, you know, was what made this volcanic glass so strong. And so trade mm -hmm. is starting to break down or something like that. What are your, what are your thoughts on that? Hmm. Looking at what we have for, for both things, kind of like looking at the mythologies so that it could be not a cook, not a copy of it, but it could be along the same vein of what their repercussions for their stuff normally is. Um, if we were gonna do it with issues, the main thing that happens when that doesn't happen, when he doesn't do his job is that, uh, where'd it go? Cause it was right here. That horrific things happen to everyone all the time. Everyone just bursts into flames. Horrific and dust. things. <laughs> no, I mean maybe. I mean probably. Who knows? Can but... divine all and divine. No, it's just people being in your business. <laughs> well, that's all. That's all that happens. Repercussions for not being able to do it is uh, the storm would be the first, the first of many. The island was created for these people. It will oh, okay. go back into the sea. Oh, oh, so that's an uh, overarching. We saying, okay, yeah, kind fabulous. of a thing because we were saying with Maui that that's water, and South Africa, their doulas uh, mostly deal with fire, and that's okay. how he created Hawaii was uh, the lava being cooled into its yeah. own island. They created this place for you, and you haven't been doing the one thing we asked, which was to keep the portals open. You know, passages. That's what they call yeah. windows. Okay, fabulous. All right, so the islanders have not been keeping up this tradition and because the new world was like we don't want to do old ways kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Forgotten the the fact that the entire island was created for them by the local by the local gods. Um, throughout the adventure, parts of the island will start to sink back into the ocean if the old ways are not restored. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. Okay, that is an overarching thing that can be used for everything. So the whole reason that these adventurers are going to help, it's going to seem in Act 1 like mm -hmm. all they're trying to do is help an old lady. You know? And it just becomes um, this whole thing of how are we suddenly helping with a coup and trying to fight a coup and trying to, like, absolutely. gods. How did we get well, here? And it, it seems like, it seems like it's like, if that's the case, then it's going to be mm -hmm. less about the actual coup itself and more about the restoration of the old ways, which is great because it leaves a million different so ways one for adventurers. Same. Yeah. Maju wants their family back where they, they are. The coup is one and the same. It has to happen. 
somebody of their blood sure. has to be on the throne. Okay, so is the so is the castle like the temple? We could say that it would make sense for the temple to be on a separate island away from everybody else, and that be your access to steel. I just didn't want to make the steel be almost like a religious metal. I didn't want it to be indicative of anything like that. Sure. There's um, so you've got uh, like I didn't want right. it to be possible, like you know. You raid raid monasteries for their gold. You can't. The Damas the, the Damascus steel. Look at me. The Dulas steel wouldn't even work unless the family blessed it for you to use it. That's why they are important. Yeah. People who usurp them, they know the ways because they were the people on the island. We know how to do this, but only somebody from this island or the God Touch is going to make this yeah. stuff work. Absolutely. No, it very it's, it actually is very similar to the story of Damascus steel, where it was yeah. <laughs> like the the way to make it was literally lost for like five hundred years. Mm -hmm. People could not figure out like they found all these Damascus steel artifacts that were incredibly yeah. strong and incredibly flexible, and they could not for the life of them figure out. I think it was until like the nineteen forties or nineteen fifties, in fact, that somebody was able to figure out how they did it. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, it was See, lost gonna be... for hundreds of years. Yeah. I don't know, maybe, maybe that was me. So tell me if I did the thing, because I knew there was a possibility that I overprepared for things. Because like you said, there could be other uh, things we talk about. We're just doing things. So, like this, is, so this is one of the things. That. This is one of the things that it's always important <laughs> to, when you're doing, when you're, when you're dealing with something like this, where, um, if you were DMing this, you absolutely could do whatever you wanted with it, right? Yeah. But it's always important when you're when you're giving something out to the rest of the world that you make sure that there are plenty of options because players yeah. do not like railroading. They want to be able to like do the things that they want to do. And if you tell them this is how this has to end, then, you know, like mm -hmm. they will first if they miss it like if they miss a clue or they miss a quest or something like that and they don't do everything they're supposed to and it's like an all or nothing thing then mm -hmm. they just feel like they failed and no one's going to want to pick this up there is the so allowing them like what i like to do with adventures that seems to have worked really well before is um taking it and having sort of like hey, yes, here's sort of base level success. You know, if you mm -hmm. go around the island murdering everyone, no, you don't get that success. But, yeah. you know, there is, but here's your baseline success. Here's here's what the, the basic accomplishment needs to be. Then you can have like all these secret endings where it's like, hey, but if you also do this thing and you also do this thing, then like the oh. gifts that you get, See, get back. I was like, you, know. you have three options to get to the exact same point. You can do it mm -hmm. one of three ways, but you're going to end up at this temple. You can either do it because you're helping the old lady get there. You can do it because you're delivering a message, or you could do it because you are uh, helping a fisherman who you accidentally bumped into, and you're delivering his payload to the castle for a feast. Either way, you're going to end up in Fabulous. the same castle. Sure. That's, that's, that's what I had had originally uh, kind of planned. But if we're sticking with one thing and then expanding on it to be the one shot, then that's what I'm trying to figure out so I can not so I can leave the other stuff right. alone. Well, I mean, we can absolutely incorporate these other things. Like for instance, okay. what we can do with, um, instead of it being like the mother-in-law's thing, like it could absolutely be, hey, the temple windows, the castle windows need to be opened and shut every day in mm -hmm. order to like the, the dance, the dance of fate needs to be done every day in the castle in yeah. order for the good fortune to remain to on the island yeah you know and then every day and it could absolutely be you could create a a ticking a ticking clock by saying every yeah, day like they have to be opened every morning but they need to be shut before the sun sets so you gotta yeah. like get to the island in that certain amount of time and try to figure out how to get in there yeah. yeah and and you can say every day that this isn't done um that like the 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 island sinks a foot yeah, and I know, so, yeah, a foot, I'm about to say a foot, another inch of rain, another yeah. something. That there is just so as you, as that happens, like th the DM will have a way to move them towards that, and if they keep ignoring yeah. it, then eventually the island is just, just going to freaking sink. Like, yeah, there is so. <laughs> 
So there's just, you know, and that also So there like, are consequences, some, yeah. Yeah. So all right, so let's do this. All right, so intro. Um they were sailing elsewhere, a storm hit and forced them to take shelter on the island. Original family is usurped and is now trying to regain the throne. Mm -hmm. Um is now trying to regain the throne in order to make sure that the rituals necessary to keep the island above water are are maintained um original family is demigods and god-blooded humans banded together to wipe out the demigods and usurp their throne um mm -hmm. and there's only one family of demigods left fabulous um Hold on just a moment. Yeah. And chapter, I screwed something up on my outline. Chapter one, there we go. Now we can do that. And all right. There. All right, so we've got that. Um there is all right cool um all right so they need to get to the castle in order to make this happen um it can be oh all right so the other things that you had were you had a fisherman and you had what was the third messenger. one messenger yeah, it was like a, a, message. a message need to be sent. It, it was, uh, uh, what was it called? But I name it, it was something clever. Uh, a favor for the tavern keeper. <laughs> okay, all right, fabulous. So we have got, um, in this situation, we can absolutely have a, um, right, so if chapter one is getting to Dula City, right? Yeah. Um, and finding that the city is sinking and nobody can yes. figure out why. Um, mm -hmm. At that point- <laughs> Crashing into the island, the family is easy mode. <laughs> yeah, right? There is- You know you exactly get, right, why. So, so they get there, so they get there, provisioning the island, including the dance of fate, So I'm keeping it as I forgot the fact that I was created from below the clouds throughout the adventure parts of the island will start to sink back into the ocean mm -hmm. if the old ways are not restored. Um, we could absolutely make it a thing where it's like the, the daughter-in-law's grandma has the biggest house and every day yep. that they do the dance of fate in that house it helps to keep things going. Um, but okay. the grandma, the reason that the city is sinking is because the grandma is too old to do this on her own. And okay. so the daughter, so now you need to go with the daughter, um, uh, escort the daughter there. And we can absolutely, I think, I think first, um, first chapter, do you want there to be any combat in there? Uh, for the first chapter? Yeah, small, just kind of, because uh, if you're going there to, to help kind of prove why they needed an escort, something simple like, a, like I guess like a bandit or something. Or do you think you're, do you, because I wouldn't want it to be like people really being in their face because of what they are. So like at least chapter two, when you were about to get closer to the castle. So you realize that this has more of a weight to it than what you originally thought? Sure. There's, um, okay, so we've got, um, and what I'm, what I'm thinking, what I'm trying to figure out now is like that sort of mm. like three act structure. So there's, yeah. um, so if act one is getting to Dula City and getting the, um, and getting the windows open and closed in grandma's house. Um, yeah. Uh, it could, 
then that would be a good place to have combat after that because they notice the old woman and are like what are you doing how are well, you here I'm, and i'm thinking i'm thinking that uh i'm trying to think how to because all of it needs to be edited and compacted so that it fits into a one shot right um Fair. There is, I'm trying to think about what that could look like. I feel like it's a trading town. It's a port city. There's probably some rough and tumble characters there. Um, and just like having to defend the daughter from like some drunken yeah. assholes. Yeah. That's what I was like, some light combat, something small. Yeah. There's, um, which could be solved with diplomacy or, you know, things like that if they don't want to turn it into combat, you know. Um, let me see, there's, I'm just trying to, what I'm also trying to figure out here is what's gonna make this interesting so that, what do they need to know initially to make sure that this quest is important enough for them to go on it, right? Um, well, the ship crashed. They, we said that we want to give somebody kind of like mending powers so that they would be able Fabulous. to fix the boat. So that could be the sun. And while we're doing that, yeah, while we're doing that, well, you can escort my wife to her mother's house. Um, there we go. Perfect. Thank you for reminding me of that. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, had a great yeah, idea yeah. earlier. Fabulous. No, put that in. All right. So it'll be, um, what is the son's name? Um, LJ, E L. Apostrophe J E I. J E I. So L J. Um, Maju. Yeah, I'm about to say it doesn't matter if it's a mom or a dad. You, they're a freaking the gods. Took their name. Of <laughs> Fa, the son of Fa, um, has immense abilities has incredible abilities He's a when swing. it comes to fixing fixing mending. when it comes to mending items he are you gonna say will, all items or yeah i feel like that would be i feel like swing. that would be appropriate and i mean if we want to just make him a boat swing but that is just thing we can absolutely do that. Mm -hmm. well, do you want to do that? Okay. If it's everything, if it's everything, we said monumental. So yeah, you can. Be I cool. feel. We'll say everything. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> I feel like that. And the thing is that the the NPCs are not going to have any control of them, so they're not going to be able to like say go do these things, right? Go do the um, Okay. Uh, he will agree to fix the boat that crashed if the adventurers will take his wife into um, court doula to help the to help his wife's grandmother with the dance of Fate. Um, uh, on the way to Port Dula, the the wife will. What's her name? I don't want to just call her the wife. <laughs> <laughs> um, wait, lady name. Down, 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 and this one. <laughs> I landed on Gabrielle, like Gabrielle, but spelt with a J. <laughs> nice, fabulous. <laughs> There's all right. So the wife, Gabrielle, Gabrielle Machu. You can tell she made it because her name is different. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> There is, uh, on the way to Portula, the wife, Javier Maju, will explain how the dance of fate 
honors the old ways and helps mm. to keep the island afloat. And that way, as she's talking about this, then the players can either choose to believe that this is literally true or this is just think superstition. Think it's just like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. would be great when they're like, ah, it's just nothing. We're just going to go open some old dear jeez. And then whoop. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll explain how the dance of fate honors the old ways and helps keep the island afloat. Um, and... As the adventurers um, get to Port Maju um, and enter the house of the grandmother, um, they see that she is no longer able to, she's no longer strong enough to open and close all the windows. And, As, and I feel like, the, sorry, um, it could be a literal thing. Like she's not strong enough, not like, oh no, I'm so feeble, but like these bitches are made of the doula steel and she can't open right? <laughs> <laughs> She has the richest house. So it would make sense she showed off. Right. She literally can't open these heavy ass doors. And There's we like no longer also the windows. That way it can not have a little fun. Because <laughs> she is feeble, but because all the windows are made <laughs> of doula steel. That way they can um, have a little fun with strength rolls trying to open these bitches. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, all right. There is uh, after helping with the dance of fate. Um, a few drunken sailors from the nearby tavern pub. Um, the nearby pub come to mm. harass the women about their beliefs. <laughs> their fancy ass windows. Right. <laughs> Fuck you with your fancy windows. In your Absolutely fancy not. Ass, your shutters cost more than my boats. <laughs> <laughs> that could put my kid through college. <laughs> <laughs> with one of your doorknobs. Yes. <laughs> um, the adventurers will need to help them out of the situation. Um, this can be done with combat or with diplomacy or with trickery. Because that's all There's always extra gods. points so, for trickery. There's always yeah, extra points absolutely. for cleverness. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. So we've got that. Um, and let's do one more thing. Let's add, um, unbeknownst to the adventurers, this ritual has kept the city from flooding for another day. Um, mm -hmm. All right, let's see. So I'm going to put in, uh, there's only one family of demigods left. Um, because the demigods were kicked from their throne, um, the island has started slowly sinking back into yeah, it, the ocean. It's a snowball the, of trouble. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> the adventurers must help keep the island afloat. All right, fabulous. Cool. All right, so we have got chapter one done. We have got, mm -hmm. you crash into the, there's a storm, um, mm -hmm. you crash into the island, you meet the Maju family. Um, one of them agrees to help you fix the boat. If you help his wife go and, you know, a lot of helping, um, help mm -hmm. his grandma do the dance of fates. You get confronted okay. about this. Um, uh, let's see, and uh, the, the women will try to help the drunkards understand the danger they are in by not following the traditions of their forebears. All right, cool. So now, the so chapter three is getting uh, the old family back onto the throne. Yes. So what is chapter two? Chapter um, two is, yeah. is that setting things up for that? Uh, yes, I think so. I think that's where we could throw in, remember I said there was a wild card of somebody who was in the castle, in the family that is currently occupying the throne. That is really Fabulous. one of the Maju. Um, it could be one of two things. I had two two fun ways we could do that. Uh, when you deliver the message, you're delivering it to a jester, and the jester is actually the, the, the God-touched person. Or it is a prince of some kind who would be considered their prince, a baby that they saved from a disaster that happened before, not knowing that that child was related to Maju, and that they had been raising basically their replacement. <laughs> Yes, okay. Um, let's see, so. So two could be like, that's when you get pulled into the, the planning and the, the, the execution of trying to help them get their throne back. Mm -hmm. You learn the problems, you join the plan, then you execute it in, in, in chapter three is what I'm thinking, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there is, I'm trying to think about like, so what do you want to happen in chapter three? Do you want this to be a like big combat for the throne? Do you want like a battle of wits? Do you want like they like get thrown in the dungeon and they have to escape? Like what's, uh, do you want the island to start sinking? Those are all options. That the, mm, I feel like the option, the, not the option. I feel like the island would only start sinking if they started hitting the time the time point, like their clock restarts if they get the fate of the thing of face done. But if they go into the castle at night, they're not going to be there in time to open it the next morning. So it yeah. puts them on the clock no matter what. <clears throat> One of the big things with uh, with Ishu is that they, they're a lot about duality. So I kept giving, I kept uh, coming up with situations that had multiple ways of solving it. Yeah. That all led to the same thing of the family getting the throne back. That's why it was like, you could, and it's up to you as the DM on whether or not you want it to be the jester or the uh, the prince, like us coming up with it. I didn't know which idea fit better. Yeah. Or frankly, just somebody who is in the castle already will be related to them and you deliver the message. Uh, it's kind of like all dependent on how you got to the castle. Maju would just tell you that there's a coup plan. If you go with the old lady, they're just gonna um, tell you the family plan. Yeah, well, there's already, so the coup has happened. There are other people on the throne. Right, yeah. like there is this is Would it be a, a reverse coup? I keep calling it a coup because it's them getting their time, but is it a Uno reverse? What do you call it? I'm sorry. That is, um, I, I, I think there is uh, a, a reclamation. Is there a term? There is a- uh, Okay. I think that's I think that's the closest that I can think of. No, reclamation to... sounds better than reverse uh, coup. So- <laughs> uh, A punk. <laughs> you just coup backwards. Right? Whoa. A poke. I don't, I don't know. It's a poke. <laughs> Got a poke. <laughs> no, thank you. <sighs> uh, 
Um, we've got, all right, so I feel like if you want, if you want multiple ways to get there, um, it, it, I think what you can that's do. That's when I was thinking this would be longer than what it was. That's why I'm trying to compartmentalize my ideas because I set them up well, for this to be like a very long thing that you were doing, not not like a one yeah. shot. So that that was me. <laughs> There's what I think what we can do um, is that there are there are five children, yeah. um, five Maju children. Uh, I think what we can say is, uh, let's say, and they, they all have the shapes, like all the grandchildren have the shape shifting ability. Mm -hmm. Let's say that. Um, and I think there, you could absolutely have them because in trickster stories, a lot of times people like the trickster themselves will appear as mm -hmm. a helper. As, you know, yeah. um, so we can absolutely do something where it's like, you know, one of like one of the grandchildren is in fact the old fisherman that needs to go and okay. get stuff. You know, one of the children. Um, and what, I, what I'm thinking is that the reason that the island has started sinking is because like the child in the castle who's a Maju uh was in fact doing the dance of fates every day and then his parents caught him doing it yeah and he got okay, thrown into yeah. the dungeon and so that could absolutely be a situation where like you know you have to get in there either you have to do it or you find out that the child's been thrown into the dungeon and you need to then go you know like I rescue really like the that. child i like that the child was was uh was thrown in the dungeon they can they can tell that one of their descendants needs help. So that's that's kind of like, so they know that they're down in the dungeon. And uh, when I originally wrote it down, it was one son and four daughters. So uh -huh. it can be the son that is that is stuck in, in the dungeon in the castle. And the four Fabulous. daughters are kind of helping the players get to the castle to save their older brother. Awesome. All right, so let's do, um, let's figure out what that looks like. All right, so. yeah. In chapter three, so the, so in chapter, well, let's do chapter two this time. All right, so yeah. chapter two, um, uh, after returning to the Majus, um, on their in their remote cave on the other side of the island. Um, you, let's see, okay, so there are, okay, square volcanic glass, islanders, where do we have a son, daughter-in-law and her five grandchildren? All right, I'm going to say, and her four grandchildren. Makes sense, yep. And then it's revealed that the, the that he's in there. The son mm -hmm. of the current ruling family is yep. actually the fifth grandchild. Um, and if we're going to do like political intrigue and shit like that, it could absolutely be yeah. that the grandchild was being held to make sure that the Majus didn't do like, uh, that makes a lot more sense than coup. there being a whole demigod there. That's just not taking their shit back. That makes yeah. so much more sense. So, yeah. Okay. So it's actually the fifth the son of the current ruling family is actually the fifth grandchild who is being held hostage to make sure that the Majus don't attempt another, don't attempt to We said reclamation, reclaim go with reclamation. their <laughs> throne. All right, fabulous. Okay, so we've got that. Coup. <laughs> um, let's add another remote cave on the other side of the island. Um, 
you are informed that the grandchildren have all gone to help their missing sibling. Yay. Um, all right. There's, I feel like this is where we can have like all kinds of different pathways, right? To get you there where it's like yeah. each of the four kids is having like they've got their own personalities and they've got their own ideas mm-hmm. about how to get to it but they're all related to a trickster god right yeah so it, uh, it's, sorry it's what you get when Ishu is literally the, the deity of pathways i felt like that yep. had to be a thing where there was so many Absolutely. ways to get to this central point <laughs> so there is so we've got 101 one that is going to be is official title i love is it one, oh my god that's daddy awesome. had, there are 101 ways to get to him <laughs> Oh my God, I've all gone to help their missing sibling. Um, uh, let's see. So, granddaughter one is I'm gonna actually disguised. be able to use all my names. Right? I want to disguise. So, what's her name? Um, let's do Jade. Jade Mashu is disguised as a fisherman Ooh. trying to get their um, wares to the castle for the- Tonight's feast, tonight's dinner. I feel like like tonight is gonna be, like can be the coronation where yes, like for it's official that That's the new good. family is being- is taking over. Yes, okay. So they're just trying to get to the their way to the castle for the coronation of the usurping family. Um, there's, I think what I would love is if chapter two, you discover that if the coronation goes ahead, the island's gonna fall. Like that's yeah, when, that's, just, that's that when it's gonna start. Result. Um, mm-hmm. That it's like that, and not that it's going to fall immediately, but that's when the actual so like. Th- there's no afoot. saving it. There's yeah. Well, I feel like what I what I would love is if there is a defeat in chapter two, so that you can have a bit of success in chapter three. So you try to stop the coronation, mm-hmm. but you can't, and then everybody gets gets kicked out of the castle again. So you find ways to get to the coronation. You can't quite stop it. The coronation yeah. happens. Suddenly, the island drops a full foot, and yeah, people the realize, starts, "Oh, <laughs> yeah, that this is this is a thing." Um, this is a thing. We weren't playing games. Oh, okay. So as that happens, then, um, then what we'll do is, uh, in chapter three, uh, there can be much more of a um, like everyone in the family now needs to help. Like everyone has to come together. Everyone's trying to do their own thing here. And then everybody has to come together in chapter three to make this work. And it'll be, I would love it if it's something like, um, like some sort of fabulous magical thing where like the, um, the family now keeps all of the windows closed in the castle. Mm. And somehow you have to find a way to open all of the windows. Yes. Um, and uh. that will create a mighty wind that will actually blow them off the throne. Um, or something like <laughs> that, that where it's just, you know, like there doesn't need to be a huge combat or anything like that in this. But a large, um, but a very large trick that ends up yeah. getting them off there would be perfect for the tricks. There's, oh out. my I God. Think. So, okay. So it could be that there is a series of windows in the castle that need to be that opened. You open and, them in the right order. <laughs> and you have to trick every, so you have to trick different members of the family into, or different servants or things into opening these windows these by windows doing different things. Reasons. 
Yeah. And <laughs> so she, if you get to the sun, so you might not be able to stop the carnation, but you are able to get to the sun and find out how he's been doing it, which are these kinds of tricks that he has, this, yeah. this bag of tricks that he has to, to trick people into opening the windows. So you have how he's been doing it. These ways work. I just got caught. But you can still yeah. get them to do, but if you do it in this order, that's the mighty wind that blows uh, the usurper Fabulous. off the throne. I love it. There's, um, there's, is there a, is there a deity that is associated with the trickster gods that like helps them out or enjoys their japes? Yeah, let, let me see, let me see. Or it could, it could just be, it could just be that, um. Because Ishu was able to trick, trick like the chief god of, of his, mm -hmm. of his pantheon. And, but, but Maui was able to trick a lot of people, um, a lot of deities in his pantheon as well. So they both were known for those things of getting into it with, the other ways you, uh, Maui slowed the sun. Oh. That could be one of the things, tricking someone into thinking it's a different time. Oh, I love Slowing it. Slowing the sun. <laughs> okay. So, so All we're right. go up, so let me pull up a list of their of their uh shenanigans. And these Fabulous. can be the different ways that you trick you trick the people. I think that would be a good All right. So after failing to stop the coronation, um the family regroups with the, and we'll say like you you do in fact save the son you know, or the grandchild. Okay, so you are able to you get know, him out. Got you. So you get you're able to get him out, and then the whole family can get back together and do the things and right? make a plan and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So after family stop the correlation, the family group regroups with the um, with the party on the, the boat, newly... like off of the island. Because I'm sorry, if they don't do this, Agreed. we're already yeah. on the boat. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Um, with the newly freed grandson, uh, the newly freed grandson. Um, they were, they were the um, the um, the the basic named child, but I did. <laughs> the name is Python. Is Python? <laughs> oh, fun! How do you spell that? Yeah, I, I actually put it like P Y T O N, like it's because <laughs> his power, because his power was going to be that he had control over, uh, um shaping metal uh, and the python was like a, a, oh, like yeah. a thing so he was able to to make things either that or freeze things like how a python keeps something in place mm -hmm. hanging up he was able to like hold something in place that was going to be his one little trick fabulous um just uses it to make uh, people trip over themselves <laughs> i love it i love it like their foot just stops moving <laughs> well there is, all right, so we've got the family groups with the newly freed grandson, Python Maje. Mm. Um, they <laughs> Sorry, the make are a plan. Um, oh, it could absolutely be that the entire castle is a puzzle box. And depending I'm on what series, places. yeah, but depending on which windows you open and in which order, you can in fact summon different things or different gods. Yes. Depending on what's going on. And there is a, uh, who, so is it, is it Maui that, Maui's the one that actually lifted the island up out of the ocean, right? Yes. Okay, why don't we have it that you need to summon Maui again because as this island has been sinking, Maui's the only one that can actually pull it back up. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, the, let's see, the adventurers have, the adventurers are back mm -hmm. on their now fixed boat because the island has begun sinking. Each day the island sinks another foot into the ocean. 
So they knew uh, there are birds on the island because in the original mm-hmm. myths, that's that's how he did it. He uh, um, broke a bunch of birds and they pulled it up. So they have to, so they have Fabulous. to actually like catch birds and the birds will, that's how they summon them by having all these birds fly off at once. They have to get them I to go off. Love it. Um, okay, in that situation, what we can, Ah, I mean, or like birds we, stuck in the house, like they have to let the birds out, and that's them summoning him and all these birds out of his place. I I love it that like there were, like that the birds used to nest like on the cliffs around the castle. Yeah, like the and then they captured them, yeah. and now they're in like cages inside the castle. Mm-hmm. You have to free them. Yes. All right, fabulous. <laughs> um, so you have to. So all right. Uh, so in that situation, uh, so what I'd like to do, if the if it's a puzzle box, then yeah. let's um, let's pick three gods that could potentially okay. solve this problem. So we've got okay. Maui who can lift, who can mm-hmm. lift the island. Um, who is a god of the ocean? They could lift the island from underneath. Okay, hold on, hold on. Excuse me. Because I feel like that would be another one that might be very interesting. Yeah, the fact that all this is happening, it's kind of covered in that, but one that would be able to pull it up from the ocean um, well, since we did, uh, since we have Maui from the Maori side, we could do another one from the the Europa and have one of their water gods be the one that can pull it up from underneath. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So let me go through them again because I kind of don't want to do reflex manifestations. Sorry, I'm doing I'm doing quick. Quick, quick reads. Um, learn. So pick the yeah. correct one. Mm. Uh, now, mm, right now, they probably would have angered that one. I found one of the originals that was, but that's winds, lightning, and violent storms. Uh, oh yeah. So, not you. You're you're like the you're the opposite of who we would like <laughs> at the time. <laughs> um, oh, uh, great wealth at the bottom of the ocean. Oh, they could uh, they could summon Olukun. Uh, Orisha spirit. Olukun, yes, okay. Yeah. All right, so we've got Olukun. Ruler of all um, bodies of water and offer, yeah, an authority over water deities. Yep, that one, big guy. Okay, so Olukun. Um, so we've got Maui, we've got Olukun. What would the third and let's go one back. be? Yep, now let's go back. Right there now, is. representing Maui's grandmother. <laughs> you found one? Yeah. Um, well, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. What's the third way that we want to have? Okay, wait, the so we have island. the birds. We have lifting yep. from the ocean, and then a third way. Uh, uh, is there um, a a god or goddess of growth? Um, and nature and plant life um, that we could use because we could absolutely do a thing where like there's a tree in the garden and if you summon this god or goddess then uh, they will force the tree's roots all the way down to the bottom of the ocean and become the support for the island. Well, uh, Fa does have a mother figure called uh, Minoa who was a uh, was, was divination goddess of sorcery and fortune telling. And so um, she lives to practice divination with palms. They could do something to all the trees, uh, make a oh. uh, a way of palms for her to have an entrance into that realm. To bring Fabulous. Her to, to uh, tell them how to fix it. That's, that's just one though. All right, well, let us, let's get some basics down and then we'll see if we've got some inspiration. All right, so chapter three. Um, uh, they learned the entire castle is in fact a puzzle box. Um, yes. Depending on how the telling. windows are opened um, and in what 
order, you can summon relatives of the ruling family from among the deities. Um, this is where we could bring in the Eye of Fate, because that was one of Fa's eyes. So Foresight would be the one use they use to help them get through the puzzle box. It wouldn't oh. be a Foresight on enemy, but on this place to help them get through. Fabulous. There's, um, okay. let's like you see. can summon them for that favor. He's like, I'll, I can show you the way. Just look through this glass and it'll be the spell Foresight, which will allow them to get through and know where okay. to go. Okay. Awesome. There is, let's see. So chapter three. Yeah. It will be, all right. So either, um, we can say there's just two. They're related to either Maui or to Olakun. Yes. Um, the Maui, two Olakun. deities that could be summoned are Maui and Olukun. Um, let's see. In order to summon Maui, uh, all of the birds that have been caged inside the castle uh, must be freed. Free. And uh, the various windows, um, let's say, what's a number that's associated with Maui? Is there any, do they have a particular number? Specific numbers? I actually do not know that offhand. Give me one second. Let's see. Because we can absolutely say that there is something delightful going on. I don't put it past that's, that's normally something that you, it is a thing of having specific numbers. Come on, even how many brothers did he have? Give me a second. I know he had, he had a bunch of brothers. If we say how many brothers he had, that can be the specific number. Oh, because you'll be freeing each of his brothers. The birds are his brothers. Hold on. Because, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Revelator. Uh, Well, I don't understand why this is such a, a question that is such a hard answer to find. They should right. just be. There is, okay, <laughs> let's see. So, all the birds that have been caged inside the castle must be freed. Um, mm -hmm. Various windows must let's be just, opened uh... in order. Um, let's do there... eight. Okay. There are eight birds. Eight. Eight must be opened in order. Fabulous. Okay, so order some Maui, all the birds that have been caged inside the castle must be freed, and the various windows must be opened in order. Um uh there's I will say uh okay, so there are Ooh, you know what? Let's change it to five. And then for that one, if they're going after Maui, each of the grandchildren uh, must attach like a silken cord okay, to yeah. each bird. Um, um, each grandchild must attach a silken cord to each to one bird and help them get to their window. This will allow Maui to, to lift the island um, lift the island using the flying birds. 
Um, all right, so for that, um, if we're gonna do that, that's five, that's basically like five encounters that potentially could happen, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what are the difficulties? Um, I feel like one of them should be um, uh, the first bird is about to be made Cooked. into a stew. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> in, in the kitchen. The party must stop this from happening. Um, uh, let's see. The second bird one, is... One just has to be like really high up in the rafters. It just has to be a heights thing. Um, right. Um, the second bird is in a cage uh, hanging from the very top of the, the aviary. I think that's where you hold them. The oh, throne room? Well, I was thinking the throne room because then they have to like sneak around and yeah. do stuff so, like yeah, get up one in the bird, rafters. One bird can be there. That could be so so I'm looking at the things and I'm on the secret of fire, which is one of the um one of the Maui myths like this. So that's the cooking one. Tamer of the okay. sun in the heavens would be them going to the high places. Uh, throne room would be okay. really fun. All right, that like is the second bird in the a cage hanging escape. from the very top of yeah. the and it's in there throne room. Uh, cage hanging from the top of the throne room. So the party must climb to the top to release that bird. Um, uh, what's the next one? Uh, one. I feel like one should leave footprints of some kind like it got in something and you can follow the footprints that are like going through the <laughs> castle so do we want to say that it's because that one did escape the kitchen like one of them uh, well, did i would escape i would say i would say uh, let that one royal be painting like from, room well i think the library that like there was like Ooh. a scribe that was studying it or There's something ink, something and it's yeah ink <laughs> and then it like knocks over the ink and so then you've got like a scribe running Ooh. around the castle <laughs> is trying to catch this With bird. feathers all over them trying to catch yeah. this bird. This, um, let's see. The third bird is is uh, trailing a track a of ink. They had been held in the library and were being studied when they escaped their cage and they escaped their cage. Currently, they are being chased by a scribe. Um, this bird must be caught and the scribe must be convinced not to alert the family. Um, all right, what's the next one? Well, one is hiding amongst livestock uh, because because it, <laughs> it, it, it needed to nest. It was currently trying to lay an egg and now no. it won't leave its egg behind. So you have to not only get the bird, you have to figure out which egg is not a chicken egg. But is this I love it. bird's egg? <laughs> the fourth bird has <laughs> been nesting amongst the, the chickens. chickens. <laughs> they will not leave their egg behind. So you must find a way to um allow the chicken to allow the magic bird to take its egg with it um and the fifth one okay this one. and i just want to let you know we are at the 45 minutes 
Mark, we've oh, got 45 okay. minutes Sorry. left <laughs> to make this happen. And there is um, Cell. I, I, there, there's a musical that comes to mind. Uh, one of the birds is actually, there are other people who listen to the old ways and they think this bird is their only hope of surviving. They are worshiping the bird. You have to steal it from its followers. Oh my God. Oh my God. They... <laughs> okay, who is, <laughs> okay. So the fifth bird. I'm sorry. Um, is, <laughs> is being i'm trying to think it's like what, divine it's just it's 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 been like uh knighted deityed it's they think they think this bird is the god on the island like we have to the, appease the bird like they've lost it uh -huh. um i will say so there is uh it's not a temple what's a small a shrine so the fifth yes. bird is on the altar of like a nested on the shrine and people the think shrine. <laughs> Altar of the shrine in the castle. It has gained followers. It has gained followers. Because of this. <laughs> um, you <laughs> must convince the followers mm -hmm. to let that you is, take just a bird. the bird. Um, or convince it that like the bird must be set free, or free. you know, in order to. Uh, but like, those are like, the different diplo uh, diplomatic yeah. ways you can get them to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so there's all right, fabulous. The so um, yeah. Uh, let's see. There's okay. Uh, once all the birds have been collected. Um, mm -hmm. Maui will appear and lift the island back up. Yeah, like lift takes the, the cords, like kind up. of takes the cores and then lifts the island back up by the birds. Lift the <coughs> island back up. Fabulous. Um, all right. And let's see. Oh, I know how Olakun can be can be summoned. Um it won't be as yes. intricate, but they are keeper of treasures that are underneath the sea as well. So if you give them treasure, it will lighten the load. So they'll have to give up a very large chunk of the doula steel back to the ocean. And then it will okay. from up from um, So what so, we can say with that is um, in mm -hmm. order to summon Olakun, you must- um, Make a sacrifice. You must open five windows and um, throw throw artifacts of doula steel into the ocean. Every adventure is this worse. Price. This <laughs> no, the gonna sacrifice. Make this <laughs> Sacrifice no, of right. fabulous. Well, yeah, the thing is that you can just grab <laughs> stuff in the castle. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So there's like you can absolutely like there are there are dualist steel weapons there are on the treasures walls. All over. There's, yeah, yeah, there's stuff all over. Um, sacrifice of fabulous. <laughs> the throne. Right, treasures <laughs> will convince Olokun to lift the island back up um the the castle is full of treasure and let's say but one of the treasures must be the newly made <laughs> doula steel crown that Ooh. the Ooh. usurping family had created for the coronation. All right, fabulous. Oh, yeah. um, once the treasures have been thrown into the ocean, Olakun will um, will lift the island. 
people with whom we'll lift the island. Uh, and once either deity has been summoned, they will kick the usurping family out of the castle so that the Majus may return to their rightful place and maintain the rituals necessary to safeguard the entire island. All right, fabulous. So that's our chapter three. So we figure out we can't stop the coronation in chapter two. So we've got to get that. So now we've got to take care of that. So um, what is happening? There is something. Nope, there is something happening here with my mouse. Now it's not happening. Good. All right. So um, we're trying to figure out like, so each of the grandchildren is going to try to do something. I think um, it should have, ooh, now that we've got five birds, we can absolutely do a thing with that. So uh, second bird. So the first bird is like, it makes sense. They're trying to get stuff in for the feast. So that gets them into the kitchen, right? So they're trying to, yes. so let's say that they are trying to do, they're trying to perform the ritual for Maui and they fail. Yes, okay. 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 All right. Cool. So. All right. So. You know, it's gonna be uh, them having to go into the um, into the throne room. That can be when yeah. they kind of get caught. They're doing yeah. that last one for the throne room. And that'll be the youngest daughter's idea of I'm just gonna go get like the best part, but they're yeah. too young, and that's kind of like what messes you guys up. Um, they have got, all gone to help their missing sibling. They are attempting to perform the ritual. See, this is why I love living documents where you can bounce around because <laughs> once you figure out what's going on now, we can tie it all together. We go There's, back all right. there. yes. They are attempting to perform the ritual of Maui. The ritual of Maui um, to summon him and kick the usurpers out. Um, all right, granddaughter Juan, Jane Maju disguised as a fisherman trying to get their wares to the castle of the coronation of the usurping family. She yes. will head to the kitchen. She will head to the kitchen, which is where you can find her as you enter the castle. Um, she will head to the, so yes, she will head to the kitchen um, and succeed <laughs> in uh, Freeing, freeing the, the bird. first bird. Um, granddaughter two. What's her name? Um, Uni. Y U N I. Uni Maje. All right. So they. Um, <laughs> second you. bird is okay. So they're the they're the youngest one. Because oh, like, the second bird the, that we've got is the one in this room. room. Yeah, I was about to ask, should we switch two and five? Because is the is that one going to be? Because isn't that one the one where they fail in the throne room and that's yeah. how they get caught? So that should be the um, fifth one. Absolutely. So we just gotta well, switch we them. will. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. Yeah. Let's see. Might be second, third, and the one sec. Yeah. The fifth. There we go. All right, cool. So the second bird is the one on the altar. All right, so um, granddaughter two, Uni <laughs> um is uh, dressed as a, oh my God, is dressed as a wandering priest. 
Yes. Who worships the bird. They're dressed as a <laughs> wandering priest who worships the second bird. They convince the crowd to let the bird attend the coronation. <laughs> That's how they it get it out. It needs the bird's blessing. Absolutely. Bird's Absolutely blessing. it does. There's, all right. Um, let's see. So we've got, then we've got the ink. We have got um, a monk. There we go. Uh, we've got the one nesting amongst the chickens. Um, and the one, okay, why don't we have the grandson? Uh, they <laughs> have been forced into, bless you, they have been forced into Thank hard you. labor, um, like herding the chickens, you know, like they're yeah, doing. Yeah, like in kitchen so work, like kitchen slug work. Yeah. There's, um, all right, so who's granddaughter three? Uh, granddaughter three is. Entity, E N I T Y. Entity Maje. Mm -hmm. Three Entity Maje. You keep saying Maje. It's Maju. It's a U. Maju God. Oh my God. It oh, is. Fine. I think you only done it twice. Ju. Maju. Um, uh, okay. I think everything else is. Is right. Maju. Okay, so we've got Maju, the Maju family. The reason I started doing that is because I realized that when I say the Majus, it looks like the Magus. So now <laughs> I've started saying mage instead of Maju. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, well, to be okay. fair, they are like they are the, the, they're the one of the magical families. I get the Absolutely. connection. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, all right, yeah, so that's the is, sun. The fourth bird is the sun. Yeah, so the third bird is... Um, I want to say they are delivering, this will be, this can be the messenger, that they are delivering um, important messages to the scribe. Yes. Is yes. Okay. Makes sense. Delivering to messages to the scribe and manages to, um, manages to steal the third bird while the scribe is distracted. <laughs> grandson, yeah. uh, and what's his name? Uh, that was the one we said was, <laughs> was Python. Python. Like All right. <laughs> so Python, so Python Maju um, has been has been captured and forced to Into do labor. menial labor. Mm. Uh, this was his plan all along to get <laughs> close to the bird nesting among the chickens as Python has been around the chickens for some time, he knows which egg to keep with him in order to lure the fourth bird away. And um then what is the fourth granddaughter's name? Uh Don't Zamara. Z I M A R A. Zamara. Zamara Maju. Um is the youngest. She attempts to Steel is the youngest and is she, the youngest she goes hard. She the goes bravest and the 
and the least wise. I feel like that absolutely fits. <laughs> it has that absolutely to be fits that. a trickster god granddaughter. Big of <laughs> heart, <laughs> dumb of ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's Yang's previous least wise. She <laughs> attempts to steal the last bird during the actual coronation. When the fireworks go off, she loses her footing in the rafters and comes tumbling down, alerting the guards to the presence of interlopers. Um, all right, so I feel like in order for this all to work, um, uh, we have to say there's a million ways that this can go down, right? Yeah. So we say that the adventurers may follow any slash all of the children and help mm -hmm. them in whatever ways they, they can. Um, you know they're not going to be able to help us split and go, but we should do this and this yeah. one just to make sure because they seem kind of hard. Oh no, right. what if they succeed? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there is in whatever ways they can, except the youngest granddaughter mm -hmm. who runs off before the plan is fully disgust um okay grander who runs off with when is fully disgust um regardless of how well they do um the granddaughter will fall all the children and the adventurers will be surrounded and all the children and adventurers will be discovered. They must either flee or be taken prisoner. Yep. Um, um, taken prisoner if they are taken prisoner um they must escape the dungeon if they escape the coronation they regroup on the they escape they escape mm -hmm. on the fixed ship now being helmed by Fa. Um, and let me see what else needs to be in there. So we've got that. Um, they, they do all the fun things. They yeah. get caught. They get it all thrown back. Oh, then um, they now know how to summon um, Maui, but Fa lets them know that they can also summon a lacoon if they'd like. Um, oh, see, look, that's what I thought. A lacoon is a K. Oh, I'm so sorry. Not C U N. It's it's K. Um, it's K U N. I'm sorry. All right, let's do. That's an easy fix. We'll do a find and replace there. Find hey. Olo Kun, and replace it with Olo Kun. There we go. And delightful. Take care. Um, Thank you. All right. So we have got. Um, all right, so now that some of the menus, either we'll be able to 
raise the island, but if both are summoned, they will work together to make the island a paradise. I feel like that's the sort of that's the sort of like hidden ending that you can get. Like you can choose, yeah. like you can choose you one or the other. You both of them. <laughs> and you're basically getting in Kanto. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> okay, so let's go through this. So, in chapter one, you crash. You meet the Maju family. Um, hmm. The son, the the son says, "I'll fix your boat." if you take my wife to visit her grandma and perform this ritual. And that's when they learn about the Dance of the Fates, all that kind of stuff. They help out, it's super cute. There's some fun role playing that happens on the trip. And then they meet a bunch of drunken bastards um, and sort of see what the issue is here. Um, you know, the difference between the humans and the demigods um, to set up that conflict. Um, there's, uh, in chapter two, they return, um, and all right. So let's see what that means. Is that um, okay? Uh, which the adventurers learn that uh, the the city has been flooding. The old woman lets you know that the only uh, know that the only way to stop it is to perform the dance of fate in the castle itself. All right, fabulous. Mm. So uh, you then return to, let's see, then the daughter-in-law will then let you know that, will then let you know that the Maju clan is trying to do just that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, after returning to the Majus in their remote cave on the other side of the island, um, this will allow the adventurers to stock up on stuff if they want to in town. Yeah. Too. Um, Opportunity for a shopping trip. Yay! <laughs> Yay! After returning to the Majus in their remote cave on the other side of the island, they're informed that the grandchildren have gone help their missing sibling. They're attempting to perform the ritual of Maui. So they're trying to do it on their own. Um, surfers out. Um, uh, the adventurers can follow any and all. I feel like that's a fun second act where it's like yeah. there are four different things that you could do. Any, like you can do multiples of them and the DM can sort of decide when it sort of if ends. they want to do something specific or what you yeah. know what's going to happen but it's it, like and it then definitely plays on the heavy theme of all these pathways lead to the one yeah i love it um and then whenever the child whenever the youngest one falls that's when yeah all Poor of it Zamara. Ends. they just Red try Zamara. their best <laughs> Zamara, i'm so sorry baby <laughs> um, so they are, so they learned about this, the, the ritual of Maui, then they learned about the ritual of Olakun. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but the, the coronation happens. Um, let me see. Uh, let's see. But regardless, um, the coronation happens and when it does, the entire island lurches and begins sinking into the ocean. So now there's utter chaos on the island. I feel like that'll be, that'll be, that'll be fun. Um, all right, and then they, in the third act, they get to solve a bunch of puzzles. 
um, and do fun things in order to summon um, a god or goddess or both. Um, or both. And then the resolution is um, the Maje, Maju, the Maju family is reinstated as the rulers of the island. They and gift the, the... And the volcano, you didn't realize, was about to erupt, goes back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's they nap, gift the, nap time. Nap, nap. Thank God. There's, they gift the adventurers with um, Dula Steel weapons of their choice and um, permanent apartments in the castle that they can use at their leisure. Mm -hmm. um, there's, um, let's see, if both deities were summoned, what do they get if both deities uh. were summoned? You, you immediately have to start playing take your face off uh, so you can just just the rocks part <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, once, once background music has been set um, it's kind of a mix of both not only would you wouldn't have to do the quote unquote sacrifice of giving up those treasures Maui pulling the thing would also pull up more treasures for you gifted by Ooh, I, love I love so it. I love it. So if you do both of them, you get more stuff. If both deities are summoned, um Maui will lift the island and with the help of Olaku. Island with the help of Olokun. And also dredge up treasures from the deep. This will include, I feel like this could absolutely be like sort of a lower level adventure. Like this would be something that you could do like first, anywhere from like first to fifth level. I think this would be fine. Um, so what we can say is that this will include um, uh, one rare item for each adventurer. So they get a little extra something. Um, rewards, uh, they will always get the potion of foresight. Um, um, doula steel weapons that count yes. as magical. And- It's like there should um, be something for everybody. Yeah. Like there should be a ranged weapon. There should be a heavy damage weapon, a finesse weapon. There should be something for everyone in the party to actually be able to yeah. get spell weapon. If they get, if they summon both deities, they will get a rare item each. All right, cool. I love it. I think that is super fun. I think this is gonna be one of those adventures too. where it's gonna start out where it's like, oh, we crashed, this we is gotta very do all this stuff. Ah. And, there's, and then it just turns into like more and more weird shit. <laughs> this, which is, which is my brand. Which is yeah. my brand of games. Just you start off with this very simple thing, and at some point you will ask, "How the hell did we get here?" I do not right. know what turn we took, but I would like to go back. <laughs> and that's just <laughs> that's like a calling card of my session. So I'm happy this it. has that little that little brand. Perfect. Of it. Perfect. <laughs> so we have got all right. So now let's figure out what art you want, mm -hmm. what the foundation is going to be grabbing for you. So for the cover, uh... what are we thinking? Um, I think it would be, I don't know. 
Oh wait, what if it was like, well, that might be a lot. What if it's the family going out? Kind of like, cause you have all the, you have the kids and you have them kind of, one of the uh, games I, I guess I like to do on the beach was to do the kind of wave, uh, the wave rider that was right at the end of the, the mm -hmm. little, the smaller one, not a surfboard, but the, yeah. the small one that you could just run and kind of do on the, um, on the little crack on the surf. Yeah. Just have them like on, on the beach. That family would be prim uh, like pinpointed. It would be nice, but also that's a lot of bodies and that's probably really looking. <laughs> There's, so we could do, I feel like, well, so, and the cover should also indicate what the story's about, right? So that could be let's, the map. Um, I'm With thinking like a bunch of markings be, on it. So the issue there is, so, so the issue there is the, is the marketing aspect of it. It needs to be something that's going to be eye-catching, let people know what they're looking at and, um, entice them to, to take it. So, um, it should involve um, some of the conflict that's happening. Um, mm -hmm. There's, um, I like the map maybe as like a back background piece mm -hmm. for the cover, you know? Um, I think it was one of the kids holding the bird with the silken cord. That's something you have to do. It would be kind of like action packed of them kind of like trying to not be drugged by this bird. By, a silk, <laughs> by the cord and it would look like is this a game is this right. just something they do on this island not I knowing this it. is one of the okay. things you so, have to do <laughs> bird so grandchild being dragged. Just dragged probably zamara probably zamara <laughs> just can't do nothing bird <laughs> attached to a silken cord um they they are running through standing water and being chased by people with black weapons I think the doula steel. So that way we've yeah, got yeah. like, you know, you've got your like several different components of the story on the cover that people can then point to and say, yeah, I love it. All right. So now um, let's figure out now what are we putting inside? Oh, because originally we said that map was going to be what was inside. Oh, uh, yes, map. Map of the island. Um, mm -hmm. And then, it'd be like a map of like just a small orb in the corner and that could be the eye of fate like the little potion bottle we were saying oh fabulous the um the potion of foresight all right fabulous all right i love it we have got it yay we did it yay we just wrote a whole oh adventure. gosh <laughs> <laughs> That was a lot of fun. I was just so Yay. much fun. Yeah, no, that's it's as like, it should what, be. That's Creating what things should be feels fun. Like. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> there is um I wish my prep for my other sessions went this went this well. That was, that was <laughs> <very good>. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, my whole sessions went this fluidly. Jeez. <laughs> right. Right. Well, I want to, first of all, I want to thank you for being here today and sharing your culture with us oh, yeah. and like helping us to create this all this fabulousness. Um, we are gonna take this, we are going to engage an artist, we're gonna lay it out for you, we are gonna do put all the legalese in there for you, and hopefully in somewhere between like six, seven weeks, we will actually have just a fully finalized product um, that we will and, then put out into the world. And tears. Yay! Tears. I just lay, yeah. I just lay <laughs> on my desk and cry. And <laughs> I love it. There's, yes. Um, and I want to thank everybody thank here so in much. chat who's been here, who's stuck around with us for the last three hours where we did fabulous writing. You will be oh, able gee, to purchase these. Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's, I mean, you get, like, you're, you're not going to write an adventure in, in 20 minutes. Like, no, come on, but it's, thank it's you, thank you, thank you. 45 minutes tops. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> and hey, everybody in chat, um, Please hit exclamation point raffle 
if you would like some fabulous dice from Phoenix Dice. And Lando, how many how many entries do we have right now? <laughs> Is it? Right, can so, I enter it? Can I? Can absolutely. I not enter it? <laughs> absolutely. Thank you, Clutch. <laughs> <laughs> they really are glorious dice. So let's see who's gonna win. Uh, I'll give I'll give like a minute more to do that. Um, and we are going to be raiding into another channel that we love, Ooh, who is actually great. part of the um, Rolling Together stream team. They are the heads of the Rolling Together stream team. Roll Together RPG, who is fabulous. They're doing a fabulous little talk show right now. So, Ooh. I would love, love, love to find out who wins this raffle. Is it going to be fun? Is it going to be Battle Scar funny? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if it is me, we'll, we will re-roll it. <laughs> it is me. We will re-roll it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can no longer enter the raffle. <laughs> oh Yo. my god Yo. <laughs> what is going on Lando? <laughs> but send, me, send me a thing on discord and i will put you up with fabulous <laughs> <laughs> I give myself seven sets, apparently. There is, but yes, we are going to, absolutely you can. So Bunny, do me a favor, send me a little message on Discord and remind me, because you've just, well, you've just been gifted fabulous dice I've from Plunge. I've been just Plunge. gifted awesome dice. Yay. So we're going to go raid, roll together right this moment. And thank you, everybody. We will see you next week. Mwah. Mm.